योग कर्मसु कौशल The focus of discussion in this video would be teaching language through fundamental elements of a novel. For a long time, the traditional approach of dealing with literary text has been determined by close reading. However, if teaching literature is to be student oriented, this is insufficient, if not one sided. An important objective in every literature class is to encourage the students to discover the subtlety and multiplicity of ideas and meanings in the texts. Furthermore, the teacher should attempt to involve the students in the relevant communication concerning the significant issues of the text. The teacher's role should thus be of a facilitator who guides the students as they draw inferences and form critical views and approaches. One consideration to be given importance here is that often learners in a language classroom are non-native speakers of English. An integrated approach to text as linguistic resource and cultural artifact through the use of motivation building techniques that facilitate overall comprehension, interpretation and cultural orientation may prove to be most beneficial in such a scenario. Also, the distinctive features of a novel as a literary genre should be taken into account while selecting strategies for teaching of novels. An effective novel reading experience that is rewarding and academically enriching must include the explication of the elements of long fiction such as theme, plot, setting, characterization, point of view, style, symbolism, etc. If these concepts are not clearly defined, students might find comprehending the texts difficult. The fundamental elements of a novel are 1. Narrative point of view. 2. Character and characterization. 3. Setting. 4. Plot and action. And 5. Theme. Let us discuss narrative point of view. It is particularly important to address the question of who is speaking or narrating the story and in what ways the narrator's identity influences our reading of the story. For example, in the case of the first person narrator, one should consider the degree of reliability of such a narrator. Depending on the degree of the first person narrator's involvement in the action, the degree of the narrator's reliability varies. A useful class activity at this point can be to ask students to rewrite a scene from the point of view of other characters in the text and to read and compare results. The six major types of point of view are third person omniscient, told from the point of view of an outsider narrator, the omniscient author nevertheless gets inside the thoughts and feelings of two or more characters. This point of view offers a lot of information and is suitable for large complex novels. It was widely used in the 18th and 19th century novels but is less common today. Third person limited omniscient. In order to limit the information and focus the attention of the reader onto one character, the author sometimes tells a story by entering the mind of one key character, usually the protagonist. The pronouns I or my are not used in limited omniscience. Third person objective or dramatic. Here the narration is completely bereft of any interior thinking. 
the author and the readers can only observe exterior actions and dialogue and from that infer a character's thoughts. In other words, the author must describe gestures and actions that indirectly show how a character feels, thinks and deals with internal conflict. Authors use this point of view to achieve a high degree of realism since it mimics how we interact in real life. It is also useful to shield the true thoughts and feelings of the characters from the readers. First person central. This perspective is told from the point of view of the main character. It allows the author to bring the reader closer to the character and feel more sympathy for the struggles faced by him or her. However, it also limits the perception of the reader to one person's perspective and they don't get a broader, more balanced point of view. Nevertheless, this view posits a sense of immediacy as we see everything through the character's eyes. First person peripheral. This also uses I or my, but from the point of view of a minor character who observes, usually in a more neutral and detached manner, the actions of the main characters. Like, with the third person objective, the detachment from the main character creates a lack of knowledge and heightens the suspense. Second person. This is a relatively rare point of view and is difficult to sustain. It is based upon the address of one speaker to a second person. It uses the you and your pronouns throughout and is difficult to maintain without sounding repetitive. In fiction, the you being addressed is often a central character and the effect is to turn the reader into the character. Let us now discuss characterization. Character can be defined as any person, animal or figure represented in a literary work. There are many types of characters, each with its own development and function. There are many ways to categorize main characters, such as protagonist or antagonist, dynamic or static characters, and round or flat characters. A character can also often fit into more than one categories or move through categories. Characters affect the world the novel revolves around. Therefore, it is of crucial importance to teach the students how to achieve an effective character analysis. E. M. Foster divides them into two groups as flat and round characters. A flat character is the symbol of a single idea or quality and reveals only one, maybe two personality traits which do not change. Flat characters are also called as background characters by Harvey because they represent the web of social relationships in the society. The round characters are complex. They demonstrate various characteristics, are complicated and often change. Round characters are usually dynamic as they change in some way over the course of a story. They are often the protagonists and the plot usually revolves around them. Main characters usually have the greatest effect on the plot or are the most affected by what happens in the story. Beyond the standard definition of protagonist, who is the main character in a literary work, an antagonist who is the main character or force that opposes the protagonist, recognizing the types of characters and the parts they play can add meaning to the reading experience. For instance, confidant as a character is someone in whom the central character confides, thus revealing the main character's personality, thoughts and intentions. The confidant does not necessarily have to be a person and foil is a character that is used to enhance another character through contrast. A useful activity for utilization of characterization for teaching, speaking and writing can be asking the students to role play by putting themselves in the situation of major or minor characters. As a group work, Students can also participate in the analysis of various characters by describing their personality and assigning relevant definition and modifiers to them. Let us discuss setting. 
According to Mandelow, we can separate the time in a novel into three groups. A. The time in which we read the novel. B. The time the novel is written. C. The past and the dramatic present in the novel. Mandelow says that any novel is a commentary on the time in which it is written. The analysis of the time of the story can be discussed as it regards the general historical time and the specific time when the action takes place. He claims that as readers we should try to enter into the time of the novel, that is we should consider or evaluate the events in the novel according to the time the novel implies as well as from the point of view of our own time. For understanding the setting, students can be asked to research about the historical period in the story. As to the specific time, students can investigate the text for facts and look for answers to questions such as, does the story mention a date? What details in the story lead to establishing the time in the story? If necessary, the teacher may act as a cultural informant and provide a very brief comment on the historical, political and economic circumstances which form the context of the novel as well as try to elicit the complicated sets of social values and literary conventions implied in the text. The issue of the place of the story can be dealt with in a similar way. Again, general and specific locality should be determined. Clues to national, regional or local identity should be explored by investigating particular scenes of the novel and discovering the number of different sets or scenes in which the action takes place. The key to an effective treatment of the issue of place is finding textual support and evidence. Next to be discussed is plot and action. The concept of plot is very important to define the structure of a novel. R. S. Screen points out that a literary work of art includes three elements, action, thought and character. These are the main elements in the structure of a novel. If the synthesizing element is thought, the novel has a plot of thought. If character, it is a plot of character. If action, then it is a plot of action. Some important terms which deal with the plot of the novel are structure, conflict, climax and resolution. The class may discuss what conflict is and how the conflict leads to the climax and eventually to the resolution of the story. The last element to be discussed is theme. The discussion on the plot and action may lead to the analysis of the theme which expresses a significant relationship demonstrated by the elements of the story. Theme is difficult concept to grasp. Unlike the concrete setting or plot, theme is subtle and subjective. The theme in a story is its underlying message. In other words, it is the critical belief about life that the author conveys. When a theme is universal, it touches on the human experience regardless of race or language. To define the theme, teacher can begin by first eliciting from the class the topics that the story touches upon and may eventually arrive at an idea which is somehow universally true. An investigation of the style and the figurative language and structure can further reveal new levels of thematic meaning. By analyzing the importance of imagery, metaphor, symbols and similar relevant terms, the teacher can draw the attention of learners to how these elements relate or reinforce something important in the novel. To make abstract themes more concrete, following activities can be highly effective. Making an anchor chart can help students get a visual understanding of what theme really is all about. Judging some books on similar themes by their cover can be an interesting activity that provokes healthy discussion. Reading inspirational words to define a theme and then making students brainstorm other stories, songs, movies or real life events in which they see this theme play out 
can also be effective. I hope this discussion will help you in creating a rewarding and academically enriching teaching learning experience in your classrooms. Thank you.